This is an extract from the Leader Coronavirus Daily podcast by the Evening Standard and hosted by me, David Marsland. To hear the whole thing, search for it on your podcast provider. With just a ticking clock behind them and the occasional photographer's click ahead of them, at 11am in the Downing Street Cabinet Room, Boris Johnson stood in silence with Chancellor Rishi Sunak to remember key workers who have died in the battle against coronavirus. While the rain fell at Westminster Bridge, buses came to a stop, remembering the 26 of their colleagues who have fallen victim to the disease. And at St Thomas's Hospital, where the Prime Minister himself was treated, the staff and patients stood two metres apart, ending their tribute with loud applause. Well, our health editor Ross Lydell's with me over Zoom. And Ross, this was an emotional moment for the country. Yes, uh, from what we understand, staff, hundreds of staff came out, stood in their atriums, or I guess the bad weather wasn't great today for standing outside, and sort of thought of those who had passed away. Uh, We went down to London Ambulance Service headquarters in Waterloo Road. Three LAS staff have died with coronavirus and uh, very sort of touching sad moment there. We were also sent some pictures by University College Hospital where hundreds of staff were in the atrium of the hospital there in their cancer centre. So um, yes, I think the question now might even be whether this becomes weekly. You obviously have the the weekly round of applause. Do we also gather weekly to um, give a minute or two's thought for those that have passed? And it was given an extra poignancy because before the silence was held, the Office for National Statistics had released the latest figures on those who had died from coronavirus. Yes. Well, Tuesday morning has become a bit of a statistical um, feast um, for those who like these sorts of numbers. At half past nine on the dot, really, the Office for National Statistics updates the nation on the latest state of play. Obviously, we do get daily figures from the Downing Street briefing and from NHS England. Those only relate to hospital deaths in the previous 24-hour period. What the ONS does, and has been doing for a few weeks now, and this is why their figures are much more important, is that they include care home deaths and deaths in people's own homes. And today we had the added benefit that the Care Quality Commission, which is the health watchdog has also been looking at the situation in care homes so it was able to provide further backup for the ONS figures but what it meant in the round is that we'd actually much more dramatic figures than we'd ever had before and probably the worst weekly figures on record in terms of all kinds of deaths in England and Wales and in summary more than 4,300 people with coronavirus died in care homes In this fortnight, they measured the period between April the 10th and April the 24th. There's a bit of a lag, uh, but gradually they will catch up. And this is really quite shocking stuff in London. To give a a sense of what this means, more than half the deaths in the most recent week were linked with coronavirus. It sounds horrific, but is there any hope for optimism? There is, however, hope for optimism, certainly within hospitals. Within care homes, it's not looking so good. It seems that there's going to be a lag there and we could expect several more weeks of very high numbers of deaths. Obviously, it's been said almost like a generation of grandparents is being wiped out here. The numbers are so enormous. But within hospitals in London, where the figures are slightly more up to date, what we can see is that we have definitely passed the peak of deaths in London hospitals. A new analysis today shows that the peak in London hospitals was on the 8th of April, which we knew already in terms of infections. Uh, What we also found out today is that 220 people died that day in London hospitals. And then from that, numbers fell pretty consistently up until the 21st of April, when the number was down at 89 deaths. But the overall trend is that the number of deaths per day on the day they happened has come down in London hospitals from about 200 to 100 in three weeks. And 
that rate of decline is faster than anywhere else in the country. Obviously, it's, it's only fair to say that the acceleration in deaths in the first place was higher in London than elsewhere in the country, but at least it's coming down sharply, just as it rose sharply before. Is this a sign that the pandemic is coming to an end? I think it's a sign that the pandemic is less severe in terms of people in hospital. There's still about 2,500 people in London hospital receiving treatment for coronavirus, of which about a fifth are still seriously ill. I think what it shows as well is that help was provided to those in hospital more quickly and the people who are living in care homes have really been left rather by the wayside despite all the alarm that was sounded because it's much less of a joined up network. You know, many care homes might only operate in groups of one or two rather than all talking to each other in the way the NHS hospitals do. That help really has taken a long while to get there and the impact over time may actually be more severe. What today's figures show is that most of the deaths have still happened in hospital. About three quarters of all coronavirus deaths are happening in hospital, but a substantial number and a growing number have happened in care homes or in people's own homes. There are about 880 people in the most recent week measured by the ONS happened in people's own homes. And this is also in a way, the, showing now how the knock-on effect of coronavirus is having an impact on mortality so that people may not seek hospital care for more normal things such as heart attack or stroke and are dying in home or in their homes or dying in care home because they're too frightened to seek emergency care. Next. COVID crisis will end. But the next thing that will be a huge problem for for London is hunger. Evgeny Lebedev on the Evening Standard's biggest ever campaign. Search for the leader coronavirus daily on any podcast provider to hear more from the podcast.